Yes, you can. Fine. Um, if everybody will look at their handouts, um, on this one that has today's schedule, did you all notice it has a white ticket? A white ticket? I want you to take that white ticket. It should be clipped right. It was clipped right in front. Did you lose yours already? <laughs> There's not one here. Um, here, I'll give you this one. Okay. You don't have one. Do you have a white ticket? If you don't have a white ticket, I have more tickets. I have lots of tickets. Okay, what I want you to do is take your white ticket and I want you to write one word. And I want you to think about Emiquan, and when you think about Emiquan, what word comes to mind? I want you to write that on your white ticket. And then I'm going to pass this basket around, and I want you to put your ticket in the basket. Sometime between now and... Well, pretty soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do a register. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> All right. The next activity we're going to do is for you to do at home. Okay, we're going to go over it just for a minute. I've taken, you all have this handout in there, smaller size. I've taken this handout in photography and I've, I've broken it down into five different levels. Okay. Five different things of when, when you start when you when you do a photograph that you have to deal with. The first level is landscape. The second level is intimate landscape. Landscape is simply taking scenery pictures, right? All right. Intimate landscapes are taking small parts of the big landscape that reflect the whole. We talked about that last week with Elliot Porter, and I brought in his book. Then we have portrait. You know that's the one you use for your grandkids. You will take a portrait of just the organism in question. And then there's macro. What's the difference between macro and portrait? Size. Okay? Macro means you're photographing something very, very small. We'll talk about macro next week. And then there's a, another level. New technologies have allowed us to do something called super macro, which means you see things that no one else sees in a way that no one else has looked at them simply because our eyes don't function that way. All right? So you've got an activity, and, and it, what I want you to do is go through it and you analyze each one of these and it asks you to what, what parameters would you need to solve to do each of those levels. Okay? It's simply getting you to think photographically again. And here's, the, here's what the sheet looks like. Okay, and then you've got this, so, and, and a lot of people specialize in these levels, you know, I'm a landscape photographer, I started down here, for the first 10 years I photographed nothing but insects, until I met Sue, and then, oh, I had to do everything else, you know, <laughs> right, because she liked plants and scenery, and, you know, then you, you grow, so. So you're talking about, like, camera settings? I'm talking about the way you see a subject. You can go out, what landscape photographer can go out and photograph Imaquan. A super macro photographer can go out and photograph Imaquan. They're not going to look the same. Okay, let me show you an example. We had a graduate student at, at U of I a couple years ago, and she was working on aquatic predaceous mites. I'm sure that's Ooh. You know? <laughs> they're, they're, they're less than the size of the head of a pin. There are thousands of species in Illinois. Most of them are predaceous. And we did this little project together. She brought them in and I photographed them for her. And then she did a, a taxonomic description of them. If you look at them, these were all from Vermilion County in the Middle Fork. These, these eight right here, undescribed species, the science. No one had ever seen them to put a name on them. They might have seen them, they put a name on them. So these are absolutely unique photos that no one has ever photographed them before. So 
We could go out and I could spend six weeks in Amicron, you come back, you wouldn't recognize a single thing that I took if you, because of that different <coughs> level, okay? And you, you guys have had workshops and all sorts of different things at Amicron. So don't just go out and stand on the hill and take a picture and like, well, I'm done, you know? So, but anyway. on the assignment sheet, you want us to put what we've set up. What, you, what you would do to, to take each of these levels, what kind of skills you think you would need? Oh, okay. skills and everything. It, it's an open-ended, Kind of activity. I just want to see. Then you're going to turn them in. You're going to sign it and turn them in. Because I want to try to assess. Okay, what's going on? All right. The other thing at noon. Uh, yeah, we already got the news. Life is quick. Right? We're going to take our class photo. No, no. The other thing is you've got three weeks until the next. Can we meet again? So you'll have. Time to do this. Uh, so at noon, we're going to gather outside in front. We'll take our class photo. We have, we have a tradition. And I'll give you a, a copy of it next week. All right. Questions? You want to, Michael, can you knock the lights down? No. Okay, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about application. Okay, we would show you all of these things that I, that I want you to, to do. We're going to talk about applying some of them. Anyway, okay, we're going to we've been talking a lot about technical stuff in Kentucky. We're going to now apply it. Okay, and we're going to start with uh, plants because what's the most important thing about plants? They're easy because they don't bleed. Are they stationary? No particularly in Illinois because we have wind. Although yesterday it was really windy when we went down into that hollow between the railroad, it's perfectly calm. Yeah, because the wind blows over the top. Okay. So photographing plants and the techniques that you need to use to photograph plants. All right, so some general concepts. This is a time when you need to really seriously consider using some sort of image stabilization device, a tripod, right? Because a lot going on, you, you need to think about that, about what's going on. You need to get parallel. You don't have to, but this is a very powerful tool. Get parallel to the narrowest plane of the subject. Now, there are two handouts I've given you to emphasize the importance of getting parallel to the narrowest plane of, remember that deer? When you're parallel to the narrowest plane of the subject, what do you have? You have more options for doing things, okay? You have more options for doing things. You must consider the background. How do you consider the background? If you don't want it in the picture, get it out of the picture. Now, don't cut it down. Get it out optically by manipulating up the field, okay? And choose a context. Thus, this level thing that we're talking about. How, how am I going to photograph this plant? It's part of the scenery. That's a very difficult one to do, and that's a very powerful tool because you can see where the plant grows, okay? What's around it? Yesterday, when I was, when, when I was down in the ditch, photograph, I, I didn't want to show where the plant grows. I mean, I wanted to show the plant, right? Because it's in a ditch, and the railroad, and the road, you know. I didn't want to show that. But throughout Yellowstone National Park, you've got this orchid, and you want to show the scenery of the bison, you can do that. Orchard, okay? And as they, so back we've got these different levels. We've got landscape level, portrait level, and macro level. Okay, there, there are others to this. All right. So, one, here's the tripod. Look how happy Sue is. Well, you can't see Sue's face. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these people, how happy they are. They, they lug your tripod down a cliff face. <laughs> the photograph, <laughs> jewel shooting stars, okay? Jewel shooting stars, so. I'll put 
put this up on the board. This is what they were photographing. Or this one. This one. They were photographing. No, they were photographing French's shooting star. Sorry. There are three species of shooting star in Illinois. The prairie shooting star, which we'll all see out in the prairies. The jewel shooting star, which you only see on less covered bluffs over the major rivers. It's not a population not far from here. And the French's shooting star, which only lives under the drip line of cliffs in southern Illinois. So, by photographing all three of them, you have a, you have a, a, a statement about what's going on all right, this allows for stability and a thoughtful approach to the subject matter. If you go ahead and set up the stupid tripod and get everything, <laughs> then, you, then you think about, oh yes, what am I doing? This is what I need to do. If you have a depth of field preview thing, you can actually see what the photos do. Or you can take a bunch and then manipulate it, okay? If you just bend over and your knees start creaking and you, oh, I got it, I think, and you walk on, it's a different scenario. You get back and like, eh, boy, I should have taken a little more time with that. All right, I can't emphasize this enough. Your image sensor plane is flat. Depth of field gives you a certain amount of subject in focus. If the subject, there's a the plane of the subject is narrow and this, then you can get by with a lot, of, lot less depth of field, which means the background is more controllable. Okay? Beautiful backgrounds. Okay? Beautiful backgrounds. Alright. What does getting parallel look like? Well, it can look weird because Every, there are a lot of things in this plane, and yet those five flowers, they were all in one plane, right? They were all in one plane, so you, you kind of got rid of the background here, and yet all of these are, here's a better example, these four lady slippers. Okay, if I had shot it from over here, or over here, what are you going to get? You're going to get one sharp one and a it's just not a bad thing to, to, to not try it, but if you want all of them, and then see what happens, you got, you got control of the background, because you know these grow in, very low in prairies, and it's a lot of stuff around them, so you want to be able to pull them out. If you pull them out, we're getting parallel. And what else did I do? I wasn't standing up looking down at them, three quarters view, I was, my knees were wet. I can show you my knees from yesterday, kneeling in a sand prairie. Got all these cactus spines. You know the phenomenon. You kneel in a sand prairie, you get bumps on all your knees, and all more pissing and so on. Here's another example, getting parallel. Okay, there's two planes here. There's this plane, which I would have had to have been 11 feet 6 to take, because it's, you know, it's a tall plane. Or this plane, which is and you see what happened, this is in a prairie, you see what happens in the background, it goes away. I didn't cut anything down, it simply goes away. All right, consider the background. All right, if you want the background in it, this is at level one, this is a, this is a portrait of an <coughs> image in a landscape <coughs> context, okay, where the plants grow. Where are they growing? Well, they're growing on a hillside in the Smoky Mountains. What are the concepts you have to deal with that? What kind of lens would you use? As wide an angle as possible. Where are you? Down. And what is absolutely paramount that you have? Massive amounts of depth of which means you have very, very, very slow shutter speed, shutter speeds. Which means you have to go out when it is calm. Okay? Remember all these things that we've been talking about? All you do is pick out the ones you need to take the picture. Okay? You pick out the ones you need. So this flower is, is 
about this far from the front of the lens. And this forest in the back is sharp too, because you remember as the focal length of the lens gets shorter, the depth of field curve gets longer. You couldn't take this with a telephoto. It's physically impossible. Okay? So this was a 16 now, millimeter lens. At what point do you bring in the shutter speed with the film speed? Uh, this was shot at ISO 400, and that was the slowest I could get and still get the picture. I could have bumped this up to 3200, yeah, but then the you know, pixel size gets big and the image degrades. Yep. So you, you remember, so you can control each and every picture in your digital camera. And, and this was at, what was it, dusk? It was, it was dark, it was getting dark. Reason you wouldn't go there then, because the wind calms down, okay? So it's, it's just these few things that you just have to pick and choose which one you want. So if you had a point and shoot camera, you'd have it cranked all the way in and you would 